Okay, welcome. So today I'd like to offer a reflection about boarding school and bullying. I'd like to talk about my own experiences of how I used to be a bully and also how I used to be bullied and yeah, what we can do to start to heal those wounds. Okay, thank you. Okie dokie. Well, I thought today I would talk about uh, bullying and yeah, it's an interesting topic really. I feel that over the last few few days, I think it was, um, I got some comments on my, my YouTube channel about my boarding school videos and reflecting, you know, they were quite aggressive and it was like just seeing, you know, the bully and I found, yeah, it was very powerful because it kind of brought up how I could be at school. So I found it to be a really a great reflection to have that, you know, the, someone else trying to bully me and just to see, you know, how I respond. And, uh, you know, I can go into, um, you know, I used to go into a lot of anger when someone would do that. So that's what I'd like to talk about a little bit. I have some a few reflections about that um, and if you find that yeah maybe you still have that and, you know what can we do so I have some notes here yeah so the first thing really is that you know bullying is not exclusive to boarding school that's clear you know you can see that in the world you can see that in mainstream school you know I work with scouts there's bullying there um, you know there's bullying at schools you know, primary schools. So bullying happens. So what's the difference between bullying at boarding school? And for me, bullying at boarding school is that you never get away from it. And yes, you could argue that if you're at home and you um, you get bullied at school, and when you get home and you get bullied there, then it's the same. Yes, that's true. And yet, that being said, there's going to be a place where you can go to get away from the bullying. And at boarding school, that is not the, the case um, in my uh, experience. And speaking to friends, clients, the ones who went to my school, you know, the truth is I didn't get bullied much. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, but I saw it a lot. And I was a bully myself. Um, so I see that, you know, one, someone gave me a reflection a few weeks ago that for the first five years of his life, you know, this character was everywhere for him. He was just, you know, in his face, you know, and it was like he was a bully, you know, it was kind of a, a very cunning bully. And, you know, it's like we can't get away. So, yes, you know, at um, mainstream school, there's bullying and that needs to be addressed. This is not about that. That's bullying at, at boarding school. That's the first thing I just wanted to say. Um, the second thing I wanted to just touch on was to do with the archetype. So part of my work is uh, with men and I run men's circles, online men's circles. And last eight months, we've really been exploring the archetypes and the archetypes just simply there's, it's kind of depth psychology. So it's like these deep patterns that we have in our psyche. Um, so it's just patterns that we all kind of run even if we're conscious of them or not and uh, kind of Jung brought them up but they're in all of the myths for thousands of years the king the magician the warrior and the lover and it said that the warrior when he's out of balance in the immature form it's called the grandstanding bully and this is the active and basically the reason they say in psychology that we bully is because deep inside we have this fear that we are weak we are fearful that somebody will find us out and this is really important and why this is really important to understand in this context is that if you look at the passive pole the passive pole is called the uh, I've forgotten I think it's the weakling um, I know that's the weakling prince um, oh no I think it's called the coward so you've got the a bystanding, 
the grandstanding bully, and then you've got the um, the coward, and the coward kind of runs away. And why this is important to understand is that often if we've been bullied, if we've been the coward, if we let it build up and build up and build up, what can happen is we can explode and then we become the bully. And likewise, we can go from the grandstanding bully and then we get bullied or we someone points it out to us and then we go into the shadow. It's like this um, going between the two. So I think this is key for us with understanding how to stand up to bullies is the first thing is to acknowledge the anger we're feeling so last few days this guy's commented on my channel you know and it's been calling you know that he called me that i was meek um coming eccentric just some you know quite ag aggressive words and that brought up anger for me and it was like, right, I have to be and feel this anger rather than me going into the bully and trying to bully him. It's like, no, this is a gift. I feel my rage. And as a child at boarding school, I did not feel that rage. I just used to go red and it meant my brain would go uh, totally blank. And I understand on a scientific level now is that the forebrain, when you have cortisol, a rush of cortisol, adrenaline, the forebrain empties the thinking mind and it goes into the hindbrain you know the fight or flight so i would have this surge of cortisol and i couldn't think so someone would try and bully me um, it was usually by words because physically i was strong i was really good at sport so if someone tried to hit me then i would usually hit them back but it was usually through words uh, that someone would attack me and i my mind would go blank i didn't know what to say um, uh, and so I think that's really key and I've kind of lost my my train of thought um, <laughs> which happens sometimes so um, moving on to the next point and I'll, I'm sure I'll come back to where I was um, the next point is about my school so we had bullies and for me I noticed that the bullies used to be not always, but used to be those that had struggled to fit in on the first year. So, for me, if you were bright or you were good at sport, then generally you didn't turn into a you know specific bully. But if you didn't fit in, if you weren't those first two things, and maybe you were bullied, um, then on the second year or third year you might turn into that bully. And that's what happened at my school. It was often those that didn't fit in. It became their place that they had some kudos. Oh yeah, I'm the bully. And and that's kind of, for me, um, I wasn't specifically the bully. But I see now that through my own actions of being the passive aggressive. So I used to just sit and be really quiet. But it was my rage just like, stay away from me. You know, just put it, giving off that really angry face of, you know, stay away. And they did. <laughs> they stayed away. But it was like I was bullying them, you know. And as I got older, I used that same energy to control the house when I was a, a monitor. Um, so I think, yeah, if we talk about the three types of bullies, there was the physical bully who was generally stronger than someone else. So they would use physical force. People tried that with me. But I would, I was strong, so I would usually uh, hit back. Mentally, so the mental uh, uh, bullying, and I found that was more specific at our school. Certainly in my house, there was a lot of mental bullying. And then there was the emotional. I think the emotional bullying, um, that happened less in our house. And yet I hear that in the girls' houses, that was common. And, you know, there was that emotional bullying. So for me, I was passive aggressive, so I was more in the physical. I was using my physical, you know, uh, presence to to bully others. Um, yeah. So the next point really is to you know, if you feel you were bullied, it's important that you feel the anger. So for example, this guy or woman leaves these comments, and it's like. 
it's quite in your face angry it's like you know I, could, I have to feel that we have to do that because otherwise what happens is I just project that out onto the other person so one of the practices I you know I've said over the years is from Thich Nhat Han. it's like just walking back and forth breathing in this anger has arisen in me breathing out I'm taking good care of this anger breathing in this anger that others are bullying me or they have bullied me and I invite you to relax as you do this this is important breathing out taking good care of this this anger breathing in I'm taking good care of this anger breathing out I relax and you know another way is if you're feeling this anger is you maybe you work out but again the invitation is to relax you know um, because if you are not relaxed then you can injure yourself but if you can just work out but feel that so the last few days you know I've just been working out feeling that I might go on my punch bag kickboxing so it's like feeling that this is what I feel because if we dump our anger onto someone else then we become the bully um, yeah and I think the other thing really is, is about bullies is, is like one is if you've been a bully is forgiveness so it's like for me forgiveness and as I've been writing my book about my boarding schools about boarding school syndrome and about my experiences I've had to admit oh wow actually there was a lot of bullying and especially as I got older onto my last year I saw it happening but I didn't stand up and I didn't do anything and you know I was a bully really although not in your face bully I was still a bully and I have to forgive myself and through writing it, it's like oh you know, starting to forgive myself. And then this leads to the next point is compassion. So compassion for ourselves. That because we were bullied or we were treated that way, that's why we bullied. So we can have compassion. That, oh, okay, we suffered. And that's why we did what we did. And then the flip side is, is then opening our hearts to the perpetrator. To realise... Oh my God, this person who's bullying me, they are really unhappy because I can resonate that that's where I was, that maybe he was bullied. And we just soften our hearts and we learn to give them love. It doesn't mean that we let them walk all over us. It's like that balance. You know, you've got aggression or, you know, the, the coward, so the bully or the coward. And it's like the middle way is like... You know, martial arts, it's finding that relaxed space. You know, when I've trained in Aikido, it's like you, you relax, the, the opponent comes at you, and you just get out of the way in a relaxed way. It's like just flowing. And it's, this is really key for us, it's like finding that compassion. You know, it can come at us, and we can just say, thank you, but no thank you. And we can take that gift, but say, thank you, that's a beautiful gift you've given me. You've really helped me to grow here. Yeah, so I think that's a you know a wrap. So as always, if you have any questions about this, anything you'd like me to talk on, um, that would be great. But yeah, I just feel if you feel that you were either a bully or you were bullied, is that it is possible to heal it. If you were a bully, it's learning forgiveness, compassion, and if you were bullied again it's compassion for that person and also to feel your anger and just allow that relax allow it up maybe work out and just allow this to process there's also matrix re-imprinting is what i use with clients a lot um, and eft that just really helps to to move through those blocks so um yeah have a wonderful week and yeah, in these strange times and yeah, really take care of yourselves. Okay.